Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, many thanks uh, to the organizers uh, for the possibility to participate in the conference. So uh, the main problem I'd like to discuss, as you can see, is the question, uh, can an object be non-abstract or uh, can an object be abstract? Uh, well, I have slightly changed uh, the title by adding round uh, brackets. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, we now have uh, two quite different questions. Probably someone may wonder whether these questions are worth uh, discussing at all, for it seems to be quite uh, evident um, that there is a long-standing tradition according to which uh, we certainly should differ a set of concrete objects from an abstract one. Uh, the traditional view on the abstract concrete distinction can be presented uh, for the sake of clarity by means of a uh, web uh, diagram. Uh, the blue circle is uh, for a set of uh, abstract objects and the pink circle is for a set of concrete objects. Well, I hope there is no color discrimination here. I've just used uh, when diagram created online and uh, the color choice uh, was random. So uh, following Sam Collins uh, terminology, let's call this tradition a standard view uh, on the abstract concrete distinction. He uses a term entity, which uh, can be regarded as a synonym or some generic concept for the term object. And you can see first uh, three chapters of his uh, comprehensive book on abstract entities. Paul Cowling uh, formulates uh, six theses of the standard view. Uh, they are uh, exhaustiveness, exclusiveness, absoluteness, non relationality, spatial temporal constancy, and model constancy. Uh, but uh, for the lack of time, I'll focus on the first two phases, uh, exhaustiveness um, and um, exclusivity, according to which uh, the abstract concrete distinction is exhaustive and exclusive. Uh, when paired with exhaustiveness, exclusivity partitions all objects, uh, as we've seen earlier, into the two categories of abstract object and concrete object. Of course, we could deny exhaustiveness and exclusivity positing objects uh, that are uh, neither abstract nor concrete or vice versa, both abstract and concrete. For example, holes, uh, shadows, fictional characters, etc. And uh, as you can see below, according to Williamson, some entities uh, fall in between the abstract and the concrete. Anyway, all these considerations still say nothing about which objects fall on uh, either side of the divide in question, as well as possible intersections uh, cases. So uh, we should clarify what we mean by abstract and concrete. Uh, of course, uh, there are different accounts of uh, following Lewis' uh, ways of uh, the abstract concrete distinction. Uh, the way of exam example introduces uh, the uh, distinction by citing paradigm cases and from the standard view mentioned above, we could provide examples of uh, abstract objects such as properties and sets. Conversely, uh, we can offer tables and teapots, uh, the paradigm cases of concrete entities. But as we've seen earlier, it's quite high to specify objects like holes, shadows, etc. Another account is a way of translation according to which there are a few roughly overlapping distinctions, for example, between the general and particular, between sets and non-sets, and so on. Ultimately, Liu's uh, discussion suggests a deflationary view on which uh, there is no uniquely fundamental distinction in the neighborhood of the abstract concrete distinction. The next account is a way of negation saying what abstract objects are by saying what they are not. Uh, this is so called uh, 
reductive analysis um, in terms of cowling. And uh, uh, the way of negation saying what abstract objects are by saying what they are not. Uh, and so um, it's uh, different versions carefully described by Paul Cowling in, the, in his book. And he concludes, uh, we are going to the way and uh, he concludes uh, that no reductive analysis uh, of the abstract concrete distinction avoids a uh, serious challenge. Unfortunately, we have no time to scrutinize them here. Instead of this, we are going to the way of abstraction. Uh, well, uh, it states uh, that Abstract entities are abstractions from concrete entities. They result from some powers abstracting specificity, highlighting is mine. So that an incomplete description of the uh, original concrete entity would be a complete description of the abstraction. And as Calvin uh, remarks, abstraction impossibly requires that all abstract entities are uh, mind dependent mental entities. A more plausible interpretation of the way of abstraction takes abstract entities to the reference of terms introduced using uh, what are sometimes called abstraction principles. But uh, I suspect we have uh, something like circle here because our uh, epistemic access for abstract entities or objects are stipulated by abstraction principles, uh, which are no more than abstract objects. We even could formulate a reverse way of abstraction, let's call it concretization, according to which uh, concrete entities are concretization of abstract entities and uh, they result from somehow as abstract in specificity. So that incomplete description of the original abstract entity would be a complete description of the concretization. Anyway, uh, discussing uh, um, anyway, discussing, uh, so, yeah. Discussing the explanatory power of abstraction principle, uh, principles as well as the way of abstraction or interpretation, we probably should admit that notions like Incompleteness or subtraction specificity might be of no considerable help in this regard. After all, abstraction principles are quite mysterious and in what sense specific is non-abstract. We even could propose uh, an identity view, a very intuitive and something like crazy view on the abstract concrete distinction. But uh, by now we have another more plausible account, non-minimalism. Uh, okay, uh, yes, and according to which there are only uh, concrete objects and um, opposite uh, to it, uh, Pythagoreanism, uh, according to which there are only abstract objects. Uh, and uh, even uh, hyper, hyper Pythagoreanism, uh, which uh, proposed uh, by Quine, and uh, with a note uh, from his uh, work um, so that we must note further that this triumph of uh, hyper Pythagoreanism has to do with the uh, values of uh, rivals of quantification and not with what we say about them. Uh, so it has to do with intelligent, not, uh, not with uh, theology and so on. And, uh, uh, and another uh, plausible view, uh, eliminativism uh, proposed, uh, I guess, uh, different authors and uh, especially third side, uh, according to which uh, the abstract concrete distinction uh, is uh, really of certain theory, so probably um, we uh, we 
should recognize that uh, nothing supports it other than tradition, and it should stand aside if it obstructs and directed simplification of ideology. Uh, well, uh, I propose uh, to move on and uh, to ask the question, do we have any suitable account of object? And um, as we have seen, uh, there is a wide disagreement about uh, abstract concrete distinction, but how about object itself? A question I have in mind, uh, as you can see, uh, do we have any suitable account of object? And I'd like to refer to the entry in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, where Bradley Rattler and Andrew Bailey formulate three broad questions about the category object. The first question, what if I need its uh, objects, of course, contrast or complement? Uh, the second one, what, what is its extension? And the third uh, question, what is uh, its nature? Uh, well, uh, I'm going to concentrate on the last question, which I guess is the most appropriate to the problem of uh, object definition in what follows uh, they try to explain what uh, I'd name uh, I'd name a functional account of object but right before it uh, we can um, we can remark uh, that object is uh, highly abstract so uh, uh, three possible roles or so maybe a functional account of object uh, I propose to call them um, referential, quantificational, and mental. So, uh, according to the first uh, role of object, to be an object just is to be a referent. And uh, according to quantificational logical account, to be an object is to be quantified. And lastly, mental or maybe reflexive account of object to be an object just is to be an object of thought. And uh, I think these accounts are not mutually excluded. Uh, each account is a kind of abstraction, diversion, and another possible role. So, um, what we have. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that uh, Damit's uh, remark um, about abstractness uh, that resembles the scale upon which objects of the Ryan sorts occupy a range of positions uh, are um, something like um, suitable in this way. Uh, well, it's very short. Sure report, I guess, or well, maybe any questions. Yeah, so if you have any questions, please. And thank you, Nikolai, for the talk. As I can see, there are no questions, right? Then we will move to the next talk. The next talk will be presented by Jason David. Um, well, uh, Brent actually has a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Y yeah, sorry, I, I couldn't find the raised hand. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, could you yes. go? Uh, yeah, I guess you've already stopped sharing. Uh, is it? Could you pull up your slides again and back up to the first one where you showed the yeah, sure. one color? for concrete and one color for, uh, yeah, go forward. Uh, yeah, keep, yeah, uh, wait, yeah, that uh, back one, or yeah, yeah, uh, oh no, forward a little bit more. Yeah, forward, keep going forward a little bit more. Yeah, keep going forward. There, this one, okay. So abstract, okay, no, that, yeah, abstract. And concrete. I'm, tr I'm trying to remember what, how I want it, but you had some. And go forward one more. 
sorry, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, this one right here. So, so abstract is a superset of concrete. It says concrete entities are concentrations of abstract entities. Subtract specific so that an incomplete description. Or, uh, uh, anyway, somewhere you had a description of what a concrete object was. You had the three classifications. Was it um, omental? Or, uh, no, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to remember my question. But anyway, you had a description of the concrete uh, that was, um, you had abstract concrete, shoot, I'm trying to remember. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe so, counts of object. Yeah, 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 counts of objects. Yeah, uh, an abstract, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, there it is. So mental reflexive to be an object is just to be an object of thought. So um, shoot, I'm trying to. <laughs> I had this in my mind, but I'm losing it. Um, a referential. So a mental object, if we have knowledge of a strawberry, say, then um, the knowledge of that strawberry is going to referent. Then its referent is the strawberry, and the mental is its knowledge of the strawberry, right? Would that would be the knowledge of the strawberry would be the mental, right? Yes. And, and then, so if we abstractly, um, perfectly describe, if we discovered what that knowledge of the strawberry was, then we would say the knowledge had the red, had a redness quality, right? And a redness quality would be knowledge of, or, or the quality would be, a, a, the redness quality would be a quality of that mental object. It would not be the quality of the strawberry, which is the referent. Would that be the case? Or, well, actually, we have at least two objects here. Uh -huh. Property, strawberry, which can be green. Well, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a object view. So let's, you're, you're, let's, you're talking about a mental object? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for instance, uh, if we say about uh, mental uh, account of objects, so uh, we can uh, specify uh, some, uh, some objects uh, in our mind uh, from uh -huh. the object. So we abstract from uh, another possible regions of the object. Okay, cool. So, so basically then the mental object would be more abstract than it, or in other words, the knowledge of the strawberry would be more abstract than it's referent the strawberry out there in the world? Or anyway, I'm just wondering what you thought the difference between those two would be. Well, you mean in what sense they are not exclusive, uh, mental and refer referential? Yeah, I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if you would consider a mental object to be on the same level of concrete as the referential strawberry that is the knowledge of. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, when, we, um, when we have uh, an object, and, um, so, um, uh, so we distance uh, from the view of uh, the abstract uh, concrete distinction because uh, the same object can be seen as concrete, concrete and abstract as well. And this, this is my guess. So uh, I think the abstract concrete distinction is uh, uh, quite mysterious and is quite... Uh, uh, redundant, uh, so, uh, and maybe it's, uh, uh, if I can speak metaphorically, um, it's uh, two sides of the same point. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, okay, cool. Thank you.